Great to have you with us. I'm Wang Mengmang. We begin the program with a special presentation on the 30 years of Shanghai's Pudong New Area. Chinese President Xi Jinping has attended an event celebrating the 30th anniversary of the establishment of Shanghai's Pudong New Area. Yang Chengxi briefs us on the key points of his speech. At the grand gathering, President Xi Jinping delivered a speech centered around further reforms and building what he calls a modern socialist country. He said that over the past 30 years, Shanghai has been a model of China's reform and opening up. He said its success is testament to the strength of the Chinese development path. President Xi also said Pudong should be a pioneer that champions the opening up of other cities along the Yangtze River. The goal is to make Shanghai a global economic, financial and trade center. So what's next for the area and Shanghai? Now, one of the key focuses for the future of Pudong is innovation. President Xi said it should become an engine of Chinese innovation that benefits the nation's needs and the people's health. To achieve this, the Chinese leader said it's important to invest more efforts into basic and applied research. He said that the objective is to achieve breakthroughs in core technologies, apply them to economic production, and ultimately form world-class industrial clusters. Now, high hopes have been placed in sectors such as integrated circuits, biomedicine, and artificial intelligence. Now, apart from innovation, President Xi also spoke about improving the financial system and business environment, boosting international cooperation, and attracting more international talents to the area. President Xi said the world is going through seismic once-in-a-century changes, and it's imperative that Pudong's development help the country achieve the dual circulation development pattern. Now, this refers to the domestic economic cycle playing a leading role while the international economic cycle supplements it. Yang Chong, CGTN, Shanghai. And for more on the 30th anniversary of the establishment of the Pudong New Area, let me bring in our reporter Li Jianhua. He joins us live from Shanghai. Hello there, Jianhua. Uh, President Xi said that Pudong has witnessed remarkable achievements in the past three decades. How is, how is it different from 30 years ago, and what kind of difference has it made over the years? Yes, Mama, it's a big difference, I have to say, from 30 years ago. Look behind me in the background, see the high-rise buildings and skyscrapers. I think that's the landmark of Shanghai. And also, it has become an icon of China. You see the tall buildings behind me, probably in movies or probably in some promo shows. So today, when it comes to the achievements of Shanghai over the past 30 years, let me give you a series of numbers. Shanghai actually accounts for one fifteenth of the country's total imports and exports. When it comes to the number of headquarters of multinational corporations, the number is around 350. But for the foreign-founded enterprises in Shanghai, the number is a lot bigger, staggering. That is around 36,000. So based on those figures I've just listed, you can see the achievements that Shanghai has achieved over the past three decades. Of course, uh, over this speech, actually, I was listening to Cheng Xi's package just now, and what caught my attention was the innovation that President Xi Jinping talked about in some cool technologies such as biomedicine, especially during the pandemic, and also artificial intelligence, and the integrated circuits, especially after the trade tensions between the United States and China. Of course, today I'm not alone, and I'm pleased to be joined by my guest, Carlo Dangdia. Good evening. Uh, yeah, you are the Vice President of the EU Chamber of Commerce in China. Welcome to our show. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here with you. Yeah, President Xi Jinping gave a speech this morning, and today he focused on continuing Shanghai's and China's reform and opening up. And also, he talked about innovation and everything. How do you think, or in which part, do you think that his speech is related to EU business operations in China? Thank you. European companies play always a good role in the development of Shanghai cities. You mentioned a few figures, so let me tell you also my figures. 25% of the city GDP, 33% of the taxation, 20% of jobs are created by foreign direct investment, which played a role in the development of the city. Indeed, we have seen, uh, we are really pleased to see the President Xi came uh, to Shanghai mm -hmm. to show his commitment to the reform. He did the same a couple of weeks ago when he went to Shenzhen in order to mark the 40 years of the opening up uh, reform over there. And this is something that we are pleased to see. What we want to see is to have a clear milestone of this uh, reform because when we have a lower market access barrier, the European companies will invest into Shanghai. 
And you are right, Shanghai is a destination of foreign direct investment, right, based on the numbers you have just told me. So when it comes to EU businesses, when it comes to some specific countries or the markets, how do you assess Shanghai's market and its potential in the next few years? We have seen that overall the internationalization of Shanghai due to the pandemic and also the slowdown of reform, it went on the standby. We are uh, heard the president speaking about innovation, for example. Please be informed that the European companies choose Shanghai because it was always the portal of the world where they were coming for the open, the friendly environment. Every time yeah. I come here, I'm amazed. This doesn't happen to me in New York or in other city. But, uh, 30, over 70% of our members, they said that the Shanghai is the best city where you can set up a research and development center. Because in this way, you can find talent and you can find the good environment. What we have seen is that uh, we would like to see more reform, for example, uh, on a tax point of view. We have seen that from the 2022, some tax benefit uh, for uh, foreigners will be given away, like in, for the fee of the schooling and so on. Instead, in Shenzhen and the Great Bay Area, you can see they are trying to attract more talent. And this is something that Shanghai look, need to look up because we want to see uh, a city more open for European investment. Yeah, that's true. There is still room for improvements for Shanghai, right? Thank you very much for your insight. And Mama, of course, uh, we too will keep discussing this topic when it comes to Shanghai and the European Union, when it comes to the uh, China and EU relationships on social media, uh, including Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and Weibo. And of course, for our viewers who are interested in the topic, you can follow us on CGT and social media. Now back to you, Mamang. Great stuff. Thank you so much, our Li Jianhua, for us from Shanghai. Okay, so now let's continue our discussion for our viewers who have just joined us. This is CGTN. We're broadcasting live in the eastern Chinese city of Shanghai. And now you can see in the background the beautiful view, the night view over there, the skyscrapers, tall buildings. I think that is uh, part of what we call the modernization of Shanghai. And of course, I'm joined by Mr. Carlo Dangria, Vice President of the EU Chamber of Commerce in China. So let's continue our discussion and then, so we talk about President Xi Jinping's speech just now and how it is related to a business or to the uh, European Union as a whole. And then also you talk about Shanghai's market and its potential. So let me uh, go back to the time that you first landed in Shanghai and you have been living here for about 15 years. Yes. So tell me how you felt about this city back in 2005. What it was like over there? Exactly. I came here for an exchange program, like a, a student. This was for a six-month period, and they passed 15 years. I always say they were the six, are the six months longest in my life. And indeed, it was a bit different, let's say like this. Real estate uh, business is definitely booming in uh, China. Uh, maybe many of these buildings are also designed by European uh, designers uh -huh. because the touch of uh, the European companies in the market is quite solid. Mm -hmm. We have uh, around 10,000 plus European companies here in, in uh, Shanghai, mm -hmm. which they give an important uh, push on the internationalization of the city. Okay, so that is really big. You have a very large presence for the European countries, right? over here in Shanghai in the past and now. Yes. So let's talk about the changes over the past 30 years. So it was quite a different view, a different scenario 30 years ago when it comes to business. I'm not talking about the view here. I know it is really beautiful. And now it's uh, 8.25 in Beijing time. We know that the live show will start pretty soon, about five minutes time. We're going to enjoy that pretty soon. So let's talk about business. So when it comes to business between China and European countries, you're from France particularly. And how do you see the potential between Shanghai, a city, and the European continent? I mean, uh, China became last July the largest trade partner of uh, Europe. It's the first time that passed the United States to become the first customer of uh, Europe. And this is really important. What we want uh, to see is, uh, is important that uh, keep going on uh, the reform. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, we were starting to discuss about uh, 
the development, the new development zone in uh, Pudong, after you had uh, the free trade zone of Shanghai that was launched in uh, 2012 by Premier League Shang, and this was good input, good push into the, the change, the reform was applied for the first time in the negative list, and after this uh, negative list was applied nationwide. So this was a period of reform, it was the period when this uh, Shanghai was attracting more and more investment. We would like to see this kind of uh, reform uh -huh. because uh, it's okay to be committed to the reform, to discuss uh, about reform, but what we want is a uh, predictability and the transparency in order to see when and how we can invest in this market. That's true and Shanghai is a very big destination for investment. As I said just now, the headquarters, the number of headquarters for multinational corporations stands at 350. I mean, I'm talking about the headquarters, but when it comes to foreign funded enterprises, a lot of them are European, I believe. That's around 36,000, that's a lot. And also the numbers you give me just now, it represents the Shanghai as the destination of investment. So I would like to ask this question, and many people are quite curious about, when it comes to Shanghai, how come there are so many foreign companies coming over here? Um, do you think the market is already saturated? Why don't they pick somewhere else? Do you think it's saturated? I believe that the market definitely is not saturated. There is a big room of uh, uh, improvement and there are opportunity of uh, untapped investment and market that can come into China. I would like to say uh, the legal services, uh, for example, where uh, European uh, law firm and foreign law firm, they, are, they cannot provide advice on Chinese uh, law and regulation. Why do not open and uh, let them give advice on corporate business only? And uh, we had uh, a survey among our members. And this is why I mentioned the legal services, because they, among our members, they were the one that they declare over 70% for sure they will make new investment. Or in the logistics sector, Shanghai is uh, the biggest uh, commercial harbor with over 42 million containers per year. The second largest, just to give you a comparison, is Singapore, 36 yeah, million. Singapore. Back, back behind. So, but anyhow, the trans international transshipment, international relay in Shanghai is still not permitted. You have to go to Korea. So this could give uh, more input, uh, more investment. I do not believe that the market is saturated. And Shanghai needs to watch out also to Shenzhen, because in Shenzhen they are trying new policies, they are permitting new investment, and then new investment is uh, flowing. Yeah, I'm really happy that you mentioned the case of Shenzhen. That is definitely the forefront of China's reform and opening up back in 1979 for Shanghai it was 1990 right so it is uh, Shanghai is a little bit behind Shenzhen but Shanghai caught up swiftly absolutely absolutely <laughs> when it comes to the economy this is the financial center of China and beyond of course so compared with Shenzhen you mentioned Shenzhen and Shanghai what do you see the difference and how do you see the status of Shanghai? Do you think it is very different from Shenzhen when it comes to its function as a city as a financial hub? So I can see some uh, similarities and some uh, diversity. When you are discussing to financial center, you touch a really good point because uh, uh, till few years back there was this policy that Shanghai by 2020 had to become the international financial center of uh -huh. the world. Yeah. And this was by 2020. Sadly, did it not reach to get there, uh -huh. but it's right, you're right, it's uh -huh. the financial center of China. We, how we can become international? Maybe if the renminbi could be a bit more international as a currency. Another example, foreign uh, banks, financial institutions uh -huh. in China altogether, they have only 1.29% uh -huh. of the market share. Why in Germany, they have, just to give you a comparison, 12%. So there are some room of improvement. Mm -hmm. Shenzhen is trying to catch up they are uh, making some uh, policies uh -huh. in order to attract more investment, uh -huh. more talent, uh -huh. and uh, is the head of the greater area, uh, greater Bay Area, okay? Uh -huh. Shanghai instead is the helm of the Yangtze River. Uh, yeah, the Delta. Yangtze River Delta, right? And also, you were talking about the greater Bay Area, of course, now. As a promise, I was talking about the light show on okay. the other side of the uh, Huangpu River. Probably we're going to talk a little bit more about the light show over there. You know, the first light show I saw actually was in Las Vegas, years ago actually, when I was a student. And it was so beautiful. And over here, 
I mean, sitting here, this is very much like a patio. Yes. We're sitting here having a drink and talk about international relations and then enjoy the view over there. Yeah, it is uh, quite a rare size actually in Shanghai. Do you live around this area? Yes, I live no, no far from here. Uh -huh. But every time I come here, I am amazed. This is a show you can see only here. Uh -huh. And it's like breathtaking. Yeah, it is definitely breathtaking. I would like to call it breathtaking here, <laughs> over here. Actually, I have been sitting here for a whole day from morning. Now it's night and then I just realized there will be a light show over here every half an hour. I think it just stopped or it is no, about no, to, it's it's a, going to pick up. It's a crescendo. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a crescendo. <laughs> I'm Italian, so I yeah. didn't know. Crescendo. Yeah, that's a very beautiful the light show there. And also, I don't think that our viewers can see that. Down there on the Huangpu River, there were so many commercial ships going back and forth over here because Huangpu River is also a very important canal in Shanghai. Yeah, for the foreign commercial ships that used to travel on the uh, canal over here, the Huangpu River. And on the other side, it used to be empty like 30 years ago, but yeah. now it's really beautiful. Before the... I really love that flower, that is magnolia. Yes. magnolia. You know Magnolia? Yes, yes, yes. Before to come here, like a couple of days ago, I had the opportunity to see an old picture in the 90s when uh, I started the reform there in Pudong. And there was just a tower, another couple of uh, TV towers, another couple of buildings. So to see it here tonight and, and to see what China can do if they really want to make reform is really impressive. Yeah, this should be the example impressive. of the new change. And you're right, this is definitely, we would like to call it the exemplar of Chinese modernization over there. But actually, this is only part of Pudong region over there. The, all, we call it the Pudong New Area. Actually, it is small behind the fancy buildings over, over there. Actually, beyond the buildings, there were more about this area. Actually, it is, still has this potential. So what do you see? Uh, Pudong's future, let's say in the next 30 years. Okay, I like, uh, I don't have the crystal ball, yeah. but uh, I would like to pick up what you mentioned before about the number of uh, headquarters of multinational company based in Shanghai, over hundreds, okay, like uh, three, four hundred you were saying, for our number uh, is even 730, yeah. just to give you. In 30 years ago, you can see that the many small medium enterprise of today can become the multinational company of tomorrow. Uh -huh. And maybe they can bring more investment. But in this period, especially during COVID-19, we have uh, seen among our members the vulnerability of uh, small and medium enterprise because many CEOs, they were stuck outside due to the pandemic, travel, yeah. pandemic travel ban. And after they could not come back, and, and after when they came back, they saw a loss in profit and uh, revenue, and they have seen some difficulties to get access to financing. So I would like to see a better ecosystem where a small medium enterprise can strive and become a multinational company. Yeah, that's true. Do you know the first company that came to Pudorn? back in 1990 was an American company, actually. Wow, no, I was not aware of that. Yeah, it was an American company, actually, who first came here. I think that's the end of this wow. light show. That's really beautiful. Yeah, the 30th anniversary over there, you can see it on that building over there. Okay, that is one of the landmark buildings in Shanghai. So in the meantime, for those who just joined us, this is CGTN and we're broadcasting live in Shanghai. So I'm gonna read some of the comments on Facebook. If you have anything, uh, you want to know from me or from my guest, Mr. Carlo. Of course, you can leave your comments on social media platform, Facebook or YouTube or Weibo, and we'll get back to your questions as soon as possible. Okay, so let's talk about, um, okay, I would like to dive a little bit deeper into this conversation when it comes to EU businesses and in its relation with Shanghai's market. I know in the European Union, I know the dynamics actually are changing, especially after Brexit, the negotiations and everything. So in what way do you think that the current situation or the status quo in the European Union would influence the business, all their business operations in China? Uh, there is an ongoing and important project between the EU and China, yeah. and this is the comprehensive agreement of mm -hmm. investment. 
While we are discussing, there are going on some uh, negotiation. I believe we are over the 30 rounds of uh, negotiation, and this can be mm -hmm. the framework where uh, we can understand what European companies can do it in China and what the Chinese company can do it in uh, mm -hmm. Europe. And uh, President Xi and uh, President von der Leyen, they agreed to conclude mm -hmm. this agreement by the end of uh, this year, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when it was the summit in uh, July mm -hmm. but after, of last year, but after the COVID uh, pandemic arrived. Mm -hmm. Now I know that there are some negotiations ongoing, but we want a solid, uh, mm -hmm. comprehensive agreement on investment. We do not want a deal uh, phase one trade deal yeah. as with other countries. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> no. So this is, can be a good pilaster, a good column where you can establish mm -hmm. the roof for the next year of the cooperation between the EU and mm -hmm. China on the trade issues. Okay, oh that's very good. I think I've got some comments on Facebook and that one is from Fred Fredman, that is Rosio's Games, yes it's beautiful. Yeah, they were talking about the live show just now. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. Of course, if you have any questions, it's not only about the beautiful view there, and that is the landmark of Shanghai, of course. And before we go, let's uh, have the last question. I would like to pick your brains a little bit when it Please. comes to say, these suggestions to the local government to further facilitate to business operations or the European uh, companies' businesses over here, and what do you have? It's important to lower the market access barrier, uh -huh. okay? It's okay to, to deliver uh, uh, headlines that the reform will happen, but it's really important to have a clear milestone of the reform. Mm -hmm. And plus, when you lower the market access barrier, we want a, a level playing field. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have, uh, we don't want to be treated better. We want a market force uh, mm -hmm. uh, competition, okay? The level playground. Uh, yeah, level okay. playground. We want the state-owned enterprise together with the small medium enterprise, with the private-owned enterprise, mm -hmm they can uh, play and they can the best will win okay yeah. because sometimes happen that uh, maybe you can come to Pudong let's say mm -hmm. you can start your own business but after to, you need to get uh, some extra license okay uh -huh. and these are the when it comes to the direct barrier. yeah when it comes to the extra license actually yeah. there is there will be a new policy that is about to be rolled out I just read the news this morning there is a, this so-called one permit scheme Yes. Which means for anyone who would like to start a business, used to, you have should, you should have multiple licenses, right? But now it is only one industrial permit. So it is uh, going to be rolled out. So this is a pilot scheme that is about to be implanted in Shanghai. So let's see what will happen to Shanghai after that scheme is implemented in Shanghai, solid, I mean, in a solid way and across the country. Let's see what will happen. Indeed, this is a, is a good commitment, yeah. but when I discuss about milestone yeah. of uh, reform, mm -hmm. when this is going to happen yeah. and uh, which sector, because at the moment I uh, pointed out a few sectors like mm -hmm. uh, bookstores, cinemas, small yeah. shops, and it's important because it's a gradual opening, wow. but what we want to see is a, a clear understanding, yeah. transparency on the regulation, because I will make you the example of the foreign investment law or the Shanghai implementation of the mm -hmm. foreign investment law. It was published uh, uh, a few weeks back and it started now on uh, November 1st. Uh -huh. the, we are pleased to have this uh, uh, uh -huh. new implementation, mm -hmm. even if we don't really like the difference between uh, uh -huh. foreign investment law for foreigners mm -hmm. and uh, company law for mm -hmm. Chinese domestic company. Yeah, but I think, we can I think the government. That. Yeah, I think the government is fine-tuning the policies exactly. like inch by inch. That is what happening in Shanghai. Like, say you mentioned the pilot freight free zone, right? And also Shanghai new area, Pudong new area, and everything. And in China, there are now dozens of pilot freight free zones already. I think they are opening up the market and reforming everything. Yes, this but way. when they are tuning, yeah. money flows somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> this is the That's issue. true. Okay, and as you said, in 30 years, in the next 30 years, and that will be a big difference, like what we saw in the past 30 years here, it was almost nothing. Exactly. But now it's the landmark of Shanghai and China. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank you so much Absolutely. once again. Absolutely, yes, always okay. great. So this is CGTN, and we were talking about China's or Shanghai's development over the past 30 years, and also Shanghai's relationship, and also China's relationship as a whole with the European 
Union. Okay, thank you very much once again. Thank course. you. It was lovely, Jahan. Thank you, CGTN, for having us. Thank you.